Good morning, explorers. Welcome to another day of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Sarah. I work in the education department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And we're so happy that you are joining us today for our program, Fishy Fun. Now, what do you think we're going to talk about in a program called Fishy Fun? Polar bears? No, probably not. Um, hermit crabs? No, probably not those either. What do you think? Oh, if you said fish, you're right. We're going to talk all about fish. Now, right here, I am standing in our Shark Lagoon exhibit, and there are some sharks in here, but we're going to focus on a different group of fish because sharks are a type of fish, but we're going to focus on the bony fish. And you can see some fish back here, right here, hanging out in our coral part of this exhibit. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at a couple of our exhibits here at the aquarium that have fish in them. And then we're gonna draw a fish to make sure that we really know the different parts of these animals' bodies. And then we're gonna take a look at some different fish that we have here at the aquarium, maybe because of their special color or the shape of their body. And we'll just explore from there. Now, while you're exploring with us say or drawing or just watching, we would love to hear from you. We'd love your participation. So you are welcome to text us in. And I'm not alone here in the studio, I have Cynthia, who's controlling all the things behind me. So she just put up this number. And this text number is 562-286-1838. So you can feel free to text us your observations, your questions, your thoughts. If you wanna know more about something we're talking about, go ahead and text us. And I have Carrie sitting at our computer and she'll take those texts and send them in to me. And then we can talk about what you wanna learn more about. Now, keep in mind that text and data rates do apply. And if you're one of our younger viewers, do make sure you have adult permission before you text us in. Now, below this text line, you'll see an email address. And that's for if you have questions after this program is live. So right now it's 9.02 on Wednesday, March 17th. And so you can text us if you're watching it live, but if it's after that time, go ahead and email us at live at lb aop.org because we're not always at the computer but we always want to be able to answer your questions all right explorers are you ready to go so i'm going to step off the screen and i'm going to have cynthia put us in a different exhibit i'm going to have her put us i'm going to step back on screen for a moment i'm going to have her put us in our blue cavern exhibit. So that's one of our large exhibits here at the aquarium. And it's modeled after Blue Cavern, which is a real place. It's a dive site off the island of Catalina. And Catalina is pretty close to us here. It's about 23 miles off our coast here. And if you go to Catalina, you can go to this dive site and it looks pretty similar to our exhibit here. So now I'm gonna step off the screen and I want you to focus on the fish in here. There's lots of other things happening, lots of other things going on, but I want you to focus on the fish. And what I want you to focus on are the part, oh, so there's a shark stealing the show. But I want you to focus on the shape of the body of the fish and the different parts. So what makes a fish a fish? There's different things on these animals' bodies that make them fish. And what are those things? Because we're gonna need to remember them when we draw our fish. So what shape? Are there any colors or patterns? Are there anything besides just their body? Do they have anything hanging off of their bodies? How do they move? All these things are gonna tell us what a fish is or what makes a fish a fish. We've got a big fish at the bottom coming towards us. It's got a big mouth, so that's something we could remember. It has a big mouth. Now look at its body. What other things do you notice on its body? Oh, it looks like we have another fish coming towards us. Hmm. Look at all these fish. Now, there are a lot of different types of fish in the ocean. There are about 35,000 different species of fish, which is a huge number. That's three, five, comma, zero, zero, zero. So many fish. More fish than we have at the aquarium. More than I could even count on my fingers or toes. Or even in my mind, I'd probably lose track when I got just a little bit into that number. So there are so many different fish and they come in all different shapes and sizes and colors and patterns. But we wanted to kind of look at the basics of our fish so we can draw it. All right, so we took a look at our blue cavern. We saw a couple different fish here and now I'm gonna have Cynthia put us in a different exhibit. So we're gonna go from a local exhibit here along our coast where we call the water temperate. So it's sort of in the low 60s and we're gonna travel somewhere warmer to a coral reef habitat. And we're gonna take a look at the fish there. Now, you might see some fish that maybe look similar or that look really different. But again, I want you to focus on those features. What things do you notice on these fish's bodies that make them fish? What are the shapes? 
What are the things coming off their body? Colors, patterns, all of those things. All right, let's take a look at our other exhibit. Ah, so this is our blue corner. Now that can be confusing because we've got blue cavern and blue corner. Blue corner is another dive site, but this one is located off the island of Palau, which is not as close to us as Catalina is. And this one is really different because it's a tropical coral reef. So at Blue Cavern, that water is probably around the low 60s. In Blue Corner, that water is going to be in the high 70s. All right, friends. So we're getting some... We're getting some comments that we are having trouble hearing. So we're going to take a moment. So my friends, we're going to pause for just a moment, check our microphones. If you can't hear us, excellent. If you're having trouble, we're going to try and figure it out and let us know if you can hear us again, okay? So we're going to pause for just a moment. Keep making those observations. All right, friends, so we checked everything on our end and we think we're doing okay. So if you are still having trouble hearing us, make sure that your volume is turned up. Uh, if you're just an individual watching, sometimes wearing headphones helps, but let us know because we want to make sure that you can hear us. All right, we think things are fixed, but keep us updated. Let us know because we want to make sure that we can fix things on our end if it's possible for us to adjust our sound. Ah, so... Ms. Amador's class, thanks so much for joining us again. It's always nice to hear from you. And you said that in the last uh, exhibit, you saw a giant sea bass. And you're right, that was a giant sea bass. And then in this exhibit, there's another big fish that kind of looks similar. It's hiding over here. It's our grouper, but all those little fish are covering it. All right, scientists, do you think we have a good idea of what a fish looks like? I think we've got a good grasp, grasp to start it out. So I'm going to go over to my document camera. I'm going to have Cynthia put up our text line so that if you want to add anything to my drawing or your drawing, you have suggestions, you can let us know. And I'm going to start drawing a fish. Now, fish bodies can come in all different shapes, but sort of the most basic one, if we look at that sea bass or the grouper or some other fish, we call it fusiform, which is a big word. And what it just means is football shaped or lemon shaped. So I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to draw my football or lemon shape just like this. Now, if you are watching along, you are welcome to draw along with any kind of paper, markers, crayons, colored pencils, any supplies you have. I am on a whiteboard, and if you have access to that, you can use that too. Or if you don't feel like drawing, you can just watch along with us. All right, so I've got my fusiform or my lemon or football-shaped body. And I'm going to pause for a moment because we've got a couple of questions. So Jennifer wants to know, why do sharks eat fish? And Adrian wants to know, what do fish eat? Ooh, those questions are kind of related. So we'll pause on our drawing for just a moment. And let's talk about what they eat really quick. So, well, you know what? We're going to come back to your question, actually. But let's talk about how they eat first. So Jennifer is asking, why do sharks eat fish? And Adrian's asking, what do fish eat? And they both eat, and they need something to eat. What do they use to eat? Whether they're eating fish or anything else, they're using their that's right, they're using their mouth. So before we get into what they eat, let's draw our fish's mouth. Now, when we we're looking at that giant sea bass, uh, Miss Amador's class said so they saw that one. That one had a really big mouth. So I'm going to draw a really big mouth of my fish right here. There is my really big fish mouth. Now, if it's a shark, it might have big teeth. A lot of fish, they don't really have big teeth. They might have small teeth, and they don't really use them to eat. And they have a range of things that they can eat, though. So depending on the size of the fish and the size of their mouth, they could eat anything from plankton, so really tiny little things floating in the water, to even bigger fish or other invertebrates like snails or clams or crabs, a whole range of things. It really depends on the type of fish and where it's living and what size its mouth is. So I have a fish mouth, but it doesn't really look like a fish yet, does it? So what else does our fish need? Now, I see some other questions coming in. 
And we will get to all these questions, but I see Adriana's question relates to something that we need to draw on our fish. And she asks, how do fish breathe? Hmm, interesting. Let's see if Cynthia can bring up a picture of any fish. Maybe just like a generic, is there a Garibaldi? Oh, this one's fine. Perfect. So this is a butterfly fish? Band a copper banded butterfly fish. I want to make sure I got the right name. So this is a copper banded butterfly fish. And kind of going back to the food, look how tiny its mouth is. It's really tiny, like a little straw almost. So we imagine it's not eating anything really big. It's going to be eating those really tiny little pieces of plankton, tiny little shrimp or other little invertebrates that are just floating in the water because its mouth is really small. But it's kind of hard to see. But if you look right here, there's a line right there. See that line? It kind of blends in, but that is a covering, and underneath that covering is what is going to help our fish breathe. Those are their gills. So I want everyone to take a deep breath. We clearly don't have gills. We can't go into the water and take a deep breath. We'll get water right up our nose. But we use our lungs to breathe. We breathe in through our nose or our mouth, and it fills our lungs. But fish, they don't have lungs. So instead, they're going to be taking these tiny little bubbles of oxygen out of the water, as they pass through their gills. So they'll pull water in through their mouth, it'll go over their gills, and if we were to look underneath this gill covering, we would find it kind of looks like a little broom or a brush. It's kind of like feathery, and all those little feathery pieces are what are gonna catch those oxygen bubbles. So we're, if we come on over to our drawing, I'm gonna draw that gill covering. Now on that butterfly fish, it was kind of small. It looked like it was only down here, but on some fish it can be really big, and underneath it, that is where all those gill filaments or those gill rakers, those things that are going to catch the oxygen, that is where they are. Now, I'm still missing some things on my fish. Now, if we go back to that butterfly fish, we've got a lot of things happening back here and up here and over here and even down here. What are those parts of the fish? Do we have any ideas? Hmm. Did you say fins? You're right, those are fins. Now the fins, they help the fish do what? They help them swim. They're much better swimmer than I am. But they help the fish swim through the water. So I'm gonna swim on over to my drawing and let's add some fins. Now, as you can see from that butterfly fish, they can be all different shapes. I'm gonna draw my fin as a triangle. We're going real basic here because we're just kind of getting the basics of what fish need to make them a fish and also to survive. And then, they ha so this is their tail fin. They have a dorsal fin that's on their back. It doesn't stick straight up the same way a shark's dorsal fin does. And then they can have some fins sort of on the side here and little finlets down here. They have lots of different types of fins, but all those fins are gonna help them to swim. So now my fish has its gills so it can breathe. It has a mouth so it can eat. It has fins so it can swim. I think it's still missing something. Can you see what it's missing? You see what I did there? Can you see what it's missing? It's eyes. It doesn't have eyes yet. So fish need eyes to see. So I'm going to draw a nice eye for my fish so it can see where it's going and what it's doing. All right. So my fish can breathe, which is very important. It can swim, super important. It can see, also very important. But we're also missing one more thing that I would draw on my fish. And that is what covers its body. Now it doesn't have skin like us. Let's take a look at that butterfly fish one more time. So do you see, we see a lot of colors and patterns, but if you look really close, we have all these little shapes and those are all of their scales. It's kind of like a suit of armor that covers their body and it acts as a layer of protection. Now I see we have a bunch of questions coming in and I'm going to get to those questions in just a moment after I draw scales on my fish. So if we go back to our drawing, I'm going to draw just a couple because I don't have time to cover my entire fish with scales, but they do cover their entire body and they can be different shapes or sizes and also different colors. As you could see on that butterfly fish, they were silver and yellow or gold and black. So they have scales that cover their whole body. So this is a basic fish. This is the things that make a fish a fish. They've got fins, they have scales, they have gills, they have their eye, they have their mouth, and those are the basics of a fish. Now, I'm gonna have Cynthia put us back in any of our exhibits that we looked at while I take a look at some of the questions that we have. So 
Back to Jennifer and Adrian. Adrian asked, what do fish eat? And we said they can eat a range of things. And Jennifer asked, why do sharks eat fish? And it just happens to be one of the food that is available to them. So a lot of animals are what we call opportunistic feeders, which means they're going to eat what they can find or what is around them. And there are a lot of smaller fish around where sharks live. And so that happens to be the food that they eat. Now, someone asked, why do lump suckers look so strange? Now, I'm going to come back into the studio. Maybe we can go into Amber Forest. I want to make sure we have fish going behind us because that is a theme today. But I'm going to see if Cynthia can find a picture of a lump sucker for those of you who may not know. So this is going to be an example of how not all fish look like that fish that we drew. They come in different shapes and sizes and colors. And lump suckers are just one of those funny, cute little fish. Here we go. That look kind of strange, but we surely love them here. So this is what a lump sucker is. And if you didn't know, a lump sucker is a type of fish. So they only are about this big. They don't get very big. They can't get bigger. The ones we have here are only about this big. And as you can see, they perch on a surface. So their fins on the bottom, I'm gonna grab my picture really quick. So we drew fins here and little fins here. But these fins down here on the bottom for the lump sucker, they aren't like other fish. They're fused together. So they kind of come together like this and they're actually changed into sort of a suction cup and they can stick onto a surface. And so this lump sucker can perch on a hard surface like a rock or um, even a plant or anything hard that they can find, they can actually perch right on top. And then they don't have to swim around a lot because their body is pretty round and they have really tiny little fins. And so they're not very good swimmers. Some fish have really big fins that help them swim really fast. And some fish have really tiny fins that don't help them swim very well. And the lump sucker is one of those that has really little fins. And so it's not the best swimmer. Now, why do they look so strange? I don't really know how to answer that question because they are strange, but also strange is pretty cool. And we love our lump suckers. We think they're so cute, even though they look pretty strange. All right. Uh, we t I answered Adriana's question about how they breathe using their gills. And Lucas asked, do fish lay eggs? Excellent question, Lucas. They do. So fish, they are egg-laying animals. Now, the number of eggs a fish lays depends on the species, but a lot of fish will lay thousands and thousands of eggs at one time. So all the fish that you see here, they all hatch from tiny little eggs. Pretty cool. All right, Spencer wants to know, how do cookie cutter sharks make holes in the body? How do they bite fish and not kill them? Interesting, okay. So sharks are a type of fish. They're not like these fish, they're a little bit different. These fish we see here are called bony fish because if we were to look inside their body, their skeleton, what gives them structure, is made of bone. Just like your skeleton and my skeleton is made of bone. Now sharks, they are fish because like in our drawing, Here's a cool zebra shark. We drew gills, fins, scales, a mouth and an eye to make a fish. And believe it or not, sharks have gills. Here's the gills on our uh, zebra shark. Here are the fins. You can kind of see the scales. It kind of looks like sand. They're a little bit different, but they have scales covering their body. Our shark has an eye and a mouth. So sharks are fish too, but their skeleton is not made of bone. Go ahead and touch your nose and wiggle it around or your ears and give them a little wiggle. They're really soft and squishy and flexible. And that's because at the tip of your nose and in your ears, you have cartilage. And cartilage is what the entire skeleton of a shark is made of. So they're a fish, but they're not a bony fish. They're a cartilaginous fish. So it's perfectly fine to talk about sharks in Fishy Fun because they're a type of fish. So Spencer wanted to know how do cookie cutter sharks make holes in the body? So if you've never heard of a cookie cutter shark, now I don't think we have any pictures, but a cookie cutter shark is a smaller shark. They're not very big. They only are about, I think they, maybe get a foot long. I'm not sure the exact size, but they're one of the smaller sharks. And their mouth is shaped like a circle. And it's got teeth in that circle. And it acts sort of like a suction cup. Think about a plunger for your toilet, how it sticks onto things. So their mouth is kind of like a suction cup and it suctions on to the side of usually whales and dolphins and it uses its teeth to kind of grind in and take a bite out of them. Think about if you're making cookies and you use a cookie cutter and you press the cookie cutter into the dough and you might kind of wiggle it around and then you lift it and you have that perfect shape. So that's the same way. Now, they don't harm the animal too much because the shark is really small compared to the size 
of the animal that it's taking a bite of. Think about, we kind of compare it to a mosquito. Raise your hand if you've gotten a mosquito bite before. I know I have because I am prone to them. When you're all around me, you don't have to worry because they're going to bite me and no one else. So I get some mosquito bites or carry. So we can save you. You can just hang out with us and you won't get any mosquito bites. But think about it. A mosquito bites you. You get that bug bite. It itches. It's uncomfortable for a couple days. And then it heals and goes away. Right? It doesn't last forever. And that's sort of how the cookie cutter bite is. They take a bite out of the animal. But it's only really small. It's not very big. So it kind of feels like a cut or a scrape. And it might be uncomfortable. And then it will heal. So they don't harm them too much because the shark is so much smaller than the animal that it's trying to eat or trying to take a bite of. Great questions. All right, and then we have another question. Oscar wants to know, do all fish have false eyes or only small fish? Ooh, excellent. So I'm going to have Cynthia bring up some pictures of fish. So we can bring up that copper banded. Oh, here's an angel fish. Now, here's a copper banded butterfly fish. And this is the one that we were looking at when Oscar asked their question. And this is what? They're talking about right here this spot so the eye of the fish is right here and it kind of blends in because it's got the stripe the color of its body going through the eye and then over here this spot kind of looks like an eye and that's called a false eye spot now let's have Cynthia bring up that other picture she showed that's an angel fish do you see a false eye spot on this one yeah, so the eye spot doesn't have to be black like it was for that other fish. This false eye spot kind of is the same color that we find on the head of this fish. Now, this fish is a bit bigger than that other fish we saw. And so it doesn't really matter on the size of the fish's body to have an eye spot. But we do find them in more of the smaller fish. Now, this one I said is bigger than the uh, copper banded butterfly fish. And to my knowledge, some of the largest, largest fish we don't find at false eye spots. I think because the larger the fish is, the more likely that they are a predator rather than being hunted as prey. Whereas the smaller fish are more likely to be prey for the larger fish. And so smaller fish are more likely to have that false eye spot because that makes it confusing for the predator, the one who's trying to eat them, to find the eye or the head, or it can even just be scary because in the ocean, and on land too, big eyes can be kind of scary, right? Really having really big eyes is kind of a, <laughs> makes people nervous or makes animals nervous. And so if we see a false eye spot and it looks like a big eye, it might make the predator a little bit nervous. They may not want to go after this animal. So while I don't think, to, think it's exclusive to small fish, we see it more often in small fish because they are more likely to be eaten by larger fish. Great question. All right, Yasmin wants to know how many lump suckers live at the aquarium. Ooh, that's a good idea, a good question. You know what, Yasmin? I am not sure. In our exhibit itself, I think we generally have maybe a handful, maybe seven or eight. But, but we also get little ones. I don't know if we're breeding them here or we just get them from other institutions. I think both. We have we breed them here, so we have babies here, and then we also get them from other institutions. Here's the oh, let's see if we can count. So I see one here, two here, three, maybe another one back here. I think these are sponges in their exhibit. There's too many to count. We can't tell. They're moving all over the place. But we have full-grown ones, and then we get have we have baby ones either that are born here or that we get from other aquariums, and sometimes they're behind the scenes. So we could have a couple dozen. So it's a great question don't know the full answer but we do have a lot of them and because we're open now if you're able to come visit us you can come check out our lump suckers all right another question how many fish live at the aquarium Ooh, good question so we have 12,000 animals but that isn't only fish that includes our invertebrates so things like snails and sea stars and crabs and lobsters and then we have mammals like our seals and sea lions and our otters but in terms of number of fish, we have about 8,000 fish. So that's 8, 0, 0, 0. Quite a bit of fish. I mean, look in here. There's a ton of fish in this one small exhibit. This is not a large exhibit. I'm going to have Cynthia go to our big trap because that is our largest exhibit. And this exhibit has about 1,000 animals in it. Now, most of them are fish. There's one turtle in here. So that's a thousand just in one exhibit. So we have quite a bit of fish here at the aquarium. All right, and then the next question is how many species of fish do we have here? Ooh, you know, these are good questions because I didn't know the answer to these questions before this program. So thanks to Carrie for helping 
give me the number. So we have about 500 species of fish here at the aquarium. So in this big exhibit, in our trap exhibit, I said there's about a thousand animals and it covers about a hundred species just in this one exhibit. But throughout the whole aquarium, we have about 500 species of fish. Pretty cool. Now we've got about five minutes left. Oh, I sorry, we have one more question. Do fish have noses? Hmm, interesting. Do fish have noses? I'm gonna throw this out to our studio. See if someone can help me out. Do fish have noses? Now, for sharks, I know that sharks do have noses. They use their nose to smell only, not to breathe. So for us, you can take a deep breath with our nose or with our mouth. But for sharks, they're only breathing with their gills and their nose is only used for smelling. But in terms of bony fish, I am not 100% sure. Now, you know what? Sometimes in science or scientists, we don't always know the answers to questions. And that is totally okay. And we hear, we like to admit when we don't know the answer because then we work together as a team, as a team of scientists, to do some research and find the answer. So you are learning right along with me, and I'm learning right along with all my coworkers here at the aquarium. And we will get to the bottom of, of fish. <coughs> excuse me. Ah, interesting. So we're going to get to the bottom of this. So what, Ca what Carrie's telling me is that some fish do, some don't. Their nose works sort of in a little different way. So Cynthia's pointed out to me that here on this angelfish right here, you can see a little hole. And that is sort of where their nose is. And a lot of fish have what we call nares instead of noses. And it's sort of a sensory organ to smell. Now, not all animals smell in the same way that we do. So their nose may be used for different purposes, or it might be used in a different way than the way that we use our nose, even if it's still trying to sense or explore its surroundings. These are great questions. Keep them coming, scientists. Now, like I said, we only have a couple minutes left, and I'm going to end with one fish that we want to talk about today, because today is a holiday where you wear a certain color. Are you wearing that color? I've got socks on that are that color. And we're going to bring up an animal that's this special color. Today we're wearing green. Are you wearing green? It's okay if you're not. I don't have that many green clothing items that I have in my closet, but I do have green socks. I can always count on my socks to be the color I need them to be. So this right here may not look like those fish that we drew or any other fish we were looking at, but this, believe it or not, this animal is a fish. But what is this animal? Have you seen it before? Have you heard? I'm going to stand over here so I'm not blocking its head. This is an eel. This is a moray eel. It's a, or a California moray eel. It's a local species we find right here along our coast in our kelp forest. And believe it or not, the eel is a fish. Now let's take a look at its body. So we see the eye, right? It's definitely got an eye right here, a nice blue eye, and it's got a mouth. And if we were to see inside its mouth, we would see that they have tiny, sharp teeth. So they can eat. Do they have any fins? Do you see any fins on this eel's body? Now it might not look too much like it, but this thing that kind of looks like a mohawk going down its back is its fin. If you look closer, you can kind of see it's got little lines or ridges, and there's sort of a separation between the rest of its body here and this top part here. And that fin goes down its back, and that is, or that line goes down its back, and that is their fin. And when they move, they move their whole body kind of like a snake like this, and that fin waves right along with it. So they do have fins. Mm. Now, scales is an interesting one. Ah, Ricky said the eel looks golden. How pretty is that? You're right. It does kind of look golden. That happens to be the lighting. So it's got some nice lighting covering it. It ha posed for its photo shoot, and it turns out golden. But it's kind of this golden green. If you look towards back here on the body, you can see it looks a little bit more green. And that's really the color of its body. Now, of Amore. Okay, I'm going to, uh, Cindy's going to bring up a clip of our eel moving. Here we go. That's fine. So here is our eel snaking its body weight. And there we can get a nice look at its mohawk fin that goes down the entire length of its body. Now, in terms of scales, their scales are a little bit different. They're one of the few scale lists. So they have no scales, but they're still a fish. So it's more like a skin covering their body, kind of like us. And then if we go back to that picture really quick, this hole, which kind of looks like an ice spot, is actually their gills. So this fish looks completely different than the other fish we drew. The, pretty much the only things that are the same are the eyes and the mouth. 
but it's still a fish and it's showing off its nice green color. Now I'm gonna have Cynthia put us into Amber Forest and we can see our green eel as we say goodbye because sadly we are out of time. I have one more question I see. See if you can spot the eel while I answer this last question. Does the shark in the exhibit eat the fish in the aquarium? Oh, that's a great question. We get a lot of times because in our shark lagoon, in our blue cavern, in our blue corner, we have fish and sharks living together. And you know what? They don't eat the other fish. Naturally in the wild or out in their natural habitat, sharks and fish do live in the same place. And there's only particular fish that these sharks are going to feed on. And so we make sure that they're not the same type of fish living in the same habitat. And we also make sure that our sharks get enough food. They get fed right to their mouth. And so they're not really looking to eat anything else but the food that they get given to them straight to their mouth. So we don't really have to worry about them looking to eat any of the fish in their exhibit. Now, as we say goodbye, did you find the eel in here? My clue is what color is that eel? We're celebrating with a certain color today. That color is green. So where do you see green in this exhibit? Right here. This is some kelp. And then if you look down, ta -da! here is our eel hanging out, hiding in that kelp. Well, thanks explorers. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you had a good time drawing our fish and learning about fish and talking about their false eye spots and scales and all the different shapes on their body. We hope you enjoyed it. We have another program coming up at 10. It is going to be in Spanish and it's all about it's a marine adventure, so you'll have to join us to find out what that adventure is. So you can join us at 10 o'clock with Cynthia. Uh, otherwise, we will see you on Friday for more Aquarium Adventure, Aquarium Online Academy. <laughs> Thanks, adventurers. Too many adventures going on. Have a good day, everyone. Oh, one more thing. If you're still watching, I know we have a lot of teachers watching. If you could text us in, that number is on the screen. And let